All right, now we need to learn a little bit about Newton's law of universal gravitation and how that influences orbits and how that makes things orbit around each other and weightlessness and all sorts of things like this. So, this is Newton's 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 law of universal gravitation. Newton's law of universal universal gravitation. Isaac Newton was not the first person in history to notice that gravity exists. He didn't discover gravity. I think the first caveman who, caveman who tripped and fell and hit the ground said, gosh, there's a force that pulls me down. I mean, gravity is something that people have thought about for a very long time. Aristotle. Back in ancient Greece, the, the, the Aristotle had his theory of gravity. He said that gravity was the force which attracts all things to the center of the universe. And he said, conveniently, the center of the universe is the center of the earth. So there are different ideas of gravitation. But Isaac Newton's the great, amazing genius who thought that maybe the earth isn't the only thing that has gravity. And further, now Aristotle also said that, you know, okay, that gravity attracts things here into the center of the earth, but then up in the heavens, well, then they obey different laws. And, you know, he, Aristotle clearly thought that gravity did not extend up into space. That's where things moved in perfect circles and all that kind of stuff. Isaac Newton's the genius who said, no, gravity is a universal force. The same force which causes the apple to fall out of the tree is this force which holds the moon in its orbit around the earth. And the Earth in its orbit around the Sun, and Jupiter's moons in the orbit, their orbits around Jupiter, which means everything has gravity. Every object in the universe has gravity. Gravity is a force that doesn't just attract things to the center of the Earth, like Aristotle thought. No, Newton says everything has gravity. Att gravity attracts every pair of objects, every object in the universe, to every other object in the universe. It attracts every pair of objects toward each other. So the force of gravity is equal to capital G. There's uh, didn't put that in there, but we call it capital G. It's a constant, so we'll pretty much ignore that constant. That's not the machinery of the equation, times the product of the two masses. Mass 1 times mass 2 divided by the distance between them squared. Okay, so let's think about this equation. So that means that if I want to calculate the force of gravity between the Earth and the Moon, what do I got to do? Well, I look up to Newton's gravity constant. That's easy. And then I take the mass of the Earth times the mass of the Moon and then divide it by the distance between them, the distance between their centers. If I want to calculate the force of gravity on me, the Earth's force of gravity on me, my weight, well, that's that's my mass times the mass of the Earth divided by the distance between me and the center of the Earth. 6,400 kilometers down to the center of the Earth. So that's, that's what's going on here. So what that means is it depends on one mass times the other mass. So right now Newton says there's a force of gravity attracting my left hand toward my right hand, pulling them towards each other. So if I were to wave a magic wand and double the mass of everything in the universe, well, what would happen? Well, this mass would be twice as much and that mass would be twice as much. And so the force of gravity would be two times, it would be four times more. If you doubled the mass of everything in the universe, the, every force of gravity in the universe would go up by a factor of four. So that's, that's kind of an interesting thing there. So it depends on the product of the masses. You multiply the masses together. So if one increases and the other increases, then you multiply them together and it goes up substantially. The force of gravity depends on the distance between them squared. So, you know, right? According to Isaac Newton, there's a force of gravity pulling my two hands towards each other. It's tiny because the two masses of my hands are very, very small. You know, usually you've got to get a planet-sized object to have appreciable gravity. But this force exists. And if I were to double the distance between my two objects, well, it says force of gravity depends on the distance squared. So if I make my objects twice as far away from each other, then the force of gravity is only one-fourth 2 times 2, 2 squared is 4. Gravity would only be 1 fourth as strong as it was. Or if I have my two objects pulling and then I triple the distance between them, now it's 3 times as much as it was before. Well, 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9, and then gravity would only be 1 ninth as strong as it was before. Gravity drops off substantially with distance. And so that's how gravity works. We take the product of the masses, masses multiplied together, divided by the distance squared, throw in a constant, stir it up, put it in the oven, pop it out, and what's, what's the cake that pops out is the force of gravity that tells us the force of gravity and how every two pairs of objects attract each other. Now we got to understand this idea because the force of gravity pulls every two object, pairs of objects straight exactly towards each other. So how does this work to make orbits? How can things orbit around each other? Let's consider the Earth, which is orbited by the Moon. Uh, the Earth pulls the Moon towards it with the Earth's gravity, and then the, the, the 
moon pulls the earth towards it as well, but the earth has a much larger mass, so it doesn't affect the earth as much. And so my question is, well, if we've got this force of gravity pulling the moon, force of gravity pulls the moon perfectly, exactly, directly toward the earth, so why is it that the moon then orbits in a, almost a circle, but in an ellipse around the earth, why didn't it just fall straight toward the earth? What causes the moon to go around the earth why, if, if the force of gravity pulls the moon straight towards the earth, why doesn't the moon just fall to the earth, smash the earth, kill us all, causing huge giant de destruction on the surface of the earth? Well, fortunately, there's another fact going on there. If the moon was at rest, if the moon had no motion at all, and then you turned on the gravity, the moon would psh, fall into the earth, blammo, the earth is, you know, big giant tidal waves of horrible destruction. But fortunately, the moon is not at rest the moon is in motion. So the moon has a velocity. The velocity of the moon is 90 degrees to this is perfectly tangent to its motion. So here's the velocity. Now this velocity, this is not a force. There is one force acting on the moon as it orbits the earth. One substantial force, one major force, one appreciable force. The force of gravity which pulls the moon toward the earth. Gravity alone would cause the moon to fall into the earth. Velocity of the moon alone, okay, if there was no force of gravity, well then by Newton's first law, the moon would move off at a constant speed in a straight line, go away forever. And so these two, they're not two forces, these two effects compromise with each other. Inertia carries the moon forward, gravity pulls the moon toward the earth, and so what happens? Well, the moon's acceleration depends on how it's moving and how everything's arranged here. And in this case, the moon's acceleration causes the moon to change direction. The moon's orbit around the Earth is pretty much a perfect circle. Let's approximate that it's a perfect circle. And so as a result, the moon moves in a circle around the Earth at a constant speed, never speeding up, never slowing down, but its direction of motion is constantly changing. And you say, well, what do you mean its direction of motion is constantly changing? It never changes direction. It's always going in a circle around the Earth. Well, when I, when I say its direction of motion is changing, I mean it's not moving at a constant speed in a straight line. Any object that's not moving at a constant speed in a straight line, well, is, is accelerating. Its, its path is being bent into a circle. So the velocity is this direction, and then an instant later, well, it's been bent. The velocity is this direction, and so the moon goes round and round the Earth. Its velocity is constantly changing. It's not moving this way, now it's moving this way, and then an instant later it's moving this way, and then it's moving this way, and then it's moving this way, and these are all different directions. This instant here, it's moving upish. Here it's moving downish, here it's moving rightish, and so that's what the force of gravity from the Earth pulling on the Moon does. It bends its motion into a path. It causes the, the, the inertia, velocity going forward, the force of gravity pulling the Moon toward the Earth causes it to the compromise around there. There's one force acting on the Moon, and that's the Earth's gravity, one major force. And that gravity causes the Moon's path to bend into a circle around the Earth. Okay, one more key question I want to talk about. Here's a nice little paradox I want to give you. Okay, to make sure we understand orbits, I want to ask you about weightlessness. Weightlessness. Okay, so here's what happens. If I've got the Earth here, and I think about astronauts up in the space station, and I've seen pictures of them, and they're all floating around, they're doing somersaults up in space, and I say, okay, if I've got the space station, I can't draw it. This is the space station. It's orbiting in a fairly circular orbit around the Earth. Why are the astronauts weightless when they're up in space? I ask that to my students and every people think and they say, well, there's no gravity in space. And I say, there's no gravity in space. What holds the Earth in its orbit around the Sun? What holds the Moon in its orbit around the Earth? There's tons of gravity in space. As if sometimes people are confused and think that air has something to do with gravity, but these are two totally different things. Just because there's no air up in space, that doesn't mean there's no gravity. Shoot, here on Earth, I can pump all the air out of a chamber, create a vacuum in a chamber. If you drop something in that chamber, it still falls. Gravity is not connected to air in the slightest. And so it's up there, it's orbiting around the Earth. Here's the space station, space station, and in the space station, the, the reason, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it, it, there is gravity in space. So then I say, well, so why are the people weightless? And they say, ah, mm, gravity depends on the distance squared. So the farther you get from the Earth, the weaker gravity gets. So the reason why they're all floating around is they're so far from the Earth that gravity is fantastically weak. And that's wrong, too. They're not far from the Earth. The altitude where the space station orbits is, what, a couple hundred miles up there. Very, very close to the Earth. Now imagine, here, 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 let's make this paradox even harder. Imagine there was a mountain a couple hundred miles tall. Now there isn't, you know, the tallest mountain, Mount Everest, is like, what, five miles tall or something like that. No, but uh, imagine, you know, rocks aren't strong enough to make a mountain much taller. But if, the, if you could, from a physics perspective, suppose there was a mountain a couple hundred miles tall. If there was, you could climb that mountain. 
And you could stand on top of that mountain. Now, you need a space suit and oxygen in order to survive. But if you were standing on that mountain, a couple hundred miles up above the surface of the Earth, you would find that gravity was 90% as strong as it is down here on, on, on the ground. And you would find that you weighed 90% of what you did down on the surface. Now, of course, you know, you've, you've, got, you've, I mean, you've got the weight of the spacesuit on you, too. So you could stand on that mountain feeling 90% as strong as you do down here, and then the space station would come whizzing past, and you would peer into the windows of the space station, you know, longingly, and there are the people, they're having a dance party in the space station, they're doing somersaults, they're turning around, they're all weightless. They're in the same place in the same time as you are. They're weightless. You're not. How is that possible? How can they be in the same place at the same time as you are? They're whizzing past, you look at them, they're having fun, you're just standing there with the weight of the space station. How could that be? Gravity is 90% as strong as it is here on the surface up there. How can they be weightless? And the answer is, you know, this is a great one, great paradox, I love torturing people with this in class, and the answer is, well, the reason why they're weightless and you're not is they're moving. They have this motion, they have this sideways motion, they're whizzing past at high speed. A feeling of weight comes from, well, really comes from two forces. I feel weight because gravity pulls me down and then my feet are on the floor. The floor pushes up on me. That's why I'm not falling. The floor, floor pushes me up, gravity pulls me down, and I feel weight. But if I jump out of an airplane as a skydiver, while I'm jumping out, I feel weightless. Now, I'm not weightless. I'm falling faster and faster and faster toward the earth. But before my parachute pops out, I feel weightless because I'm falling. There's only one appreciable force on me, and I'm, oh, I'm obeying it. I'm doing what it wants me to do. Right now, I'm not obeying gravity. Gravity says, fall down. And I'm saying, no, I'm standing on the floor. I won't fall down. And because these two forces are warring over me, I have a feeling of weight. But a skydiver just jumping out of an airplane is, feels weightless because, because that person is obeying gravity. If you're doing what gravity wants you to do, then you feel weightless. And the people in the space station are doing that. They are accelerating in exactly the way that gravity wants them to do. So because they have this sideways motion, then their acceleration takes the form of bending their path in a circle around the Earth, and they're obeying gravity. There is one force on them, and they feel weightless because they're in free fall. In the same way a skydiver feels weightless, because the skydiver is in free fall. They're doing what gravity is telling them to do. I'm not, because I've got this other second force, the force of the ground on me. If I could somehow jump sideways within you know, hundreds of miles an hour to get up to orbital speed, then I would be weightless too. It's the sideways motion that causes gravity to bend this in a path around the Earth, constantly never hitting the Earth, constantly bending around and around in a steady circle around the Earth. And so they feel weightless, and I don't. And that's why astronauts are weightless. There is gravity in space, and it's very strong. It's just that they're obeying gravity. They're moving in the way that gravity wants them to move, and so that's why astronauts in space are weightless.